Welcome to the SCP Foundation. I am 05-4 and today you will be briefed on SCP-010. Well, let's go ahead and jump into the briefing here. Item number SCP-010. Object Class Safe. Special Containment Procedures. The objects comprising SCP-10 are to be kept in numbered locked boxes in a high security facility. They are not to be worn except by test subjects. SCP-010 are only to be removed from storage for testing. Description. SCP-10 consists of a series of six apparently identical cast iron collars with numbered metal tags and one remote control. The control is SCP-010-1. The collars are SCP-010-2 through-7. The collars contain intricate electronic components and are powered by small, uh, 5 mm diameter, 2 mm thick, 100V batteries. These batteries are rechargeable. The remote is a heavy black box resembling an old-style handheld radio transmitter and receiver with primitive blue-white cathode ray screen and a series of more than 100 unlabeled buttons, as well as a frequency tuner. Through trial and error, the frequencies of all six currently found callers have been discovered. A label in Russian is stamped into the metal along with a logo consisting of workers building in a pyramid. No official Russian corporation or government agency uses this logo or matches the word stamped into the metal. Placing the collar around the neck of a person and securing it allows one to control their every movement with the remote. It is also capable of producing an adrenal response and activating or deactivating the sympathetic nervous system. The most abnormal feature of the collars is the effect they have on the body morphology. They allow the user of the remote to reconfigure the shape of the victim to an extent that is apparently only limited by the knowledge of the programming language of the remote. Addendum 010-1 History SCP-010 was discovered in the basement of a lone man in the Midwestern United States after a local disappearance was connected to him. When the police raided the man's house, they found SCP-010 as well as several dead bodies. One of the bodies was identified to be the man. The others were several other missing persons. The cause of death seemed to be mass suicide, however there were signs of significant struggle first. Addendum 010-2 Disassemble Experiment. Test 1. SCP-010-2 taken apart piecewise, the parts labeled and several photographs taken, then reassembled. Result. After reassembly, SCP-010-2 continues to function. Test 2. SCP-010-8 constructed identically to SCP-010-2 but with the closest approximations available to the unreplicable components. Result. SCP-010-8 fails to function. Test 3. Unreplicable components from SCP-010-2 placed into proper locations on SCP-010-8. Result. SCP-010-2 ceases functioning with the removal of components. SCP-010-8 begins functioning. Test 4. Components returned to SCP-010-2. Replicable components in SCP-010-2 replaced randomly with replicas. Result. SCP-010-2 begins functioning with return of components. Changing replicable components for replicas does not significantly reduce functionality. Replacement of a damaged transistor decreased time from transmission to effect of SCP-010-2 response to commands entered in the remote by 12%. Addendum 010-3. SCP-010 has been demonstrated to work more effectively in creating unskilled labor than for any other task. The logo is apt. Dr. Redacted. And that concludes your briefing on SCP-10. And I have confidence that with this briefing, you'll perform an amazing job researching all of the components of SCP-10 and maybe even mapping out what the rest of those buttons do. 
Anyways, remember, we secure, contain, and protect. We die in the dark so that they can live in the light. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, uh, subscribe, and ring the bell if you'd like to see more. If you didn't enjoy this video, go ahead and leave a comment as to why. Uh, please try to keep your comments uh, constructive if you can. And well, thank you so much. Have a good rest of your whatever.